Hello. Thank you for joining us today. I see our uh, attendees, a lot of people we know out there. So we do thank you for uh, spending your time with us today. Uh, if you don't know, I am Larry Rambo. This is Jimmy Fielding. And wanted to, to start off and, and talk to you about liftgate charging. And, uh, you know, why do you need it? And, uh, what kind of system would you might need? And just some of the basic questions might uh, help understand uh, the criteria and selecting and make sure you got the, the right system for the job. You know, first question always comes up is, you know, do I need a uh, charging system or why do I need a charging system? Well, over the years, we've talked to a lot of people, different scenarios. And say, yeah, I, I really don't need it. I've used a traditional system for years. Um, you know, I really don't have problems. And you, you spend all the time and ask them, it's like, you know, you may not have gates that are stuck on the ground, but maybe you have other problems. And one of those is battery life. So we actually got a, a poll question for you to start off this presentation is um, if you would just click on the right answer but what is your average battery liftgate like um, if you would just take a couple minutes and select that you know whatever you typically see um, and this will tally it up and we can, can answer that here in a second see what everybody uh, responded and we can't see who answered what so you know don't be embarrassed or you know scared to, to click on any of these it's us to help you know make this presentation as good as we can and and to help everybody. Hope that's enough time. So yeah, six six months seems to be the the most common. About yeah. fifty percent. We got you know one two years. We actually have some people getting you know good life out of batteries. Um, but that's one of those things where we do talk about these is. Uh, you know, there, there's many things that add up to you know, why you do need a charging system, whether it's a traditional dual pole on up to a, you know, a, a more elaborate uh, system that, you know, when you look at all the different criteria, uh, you know, what problems are you having? Is it road calls? Is it short battery life? Um, is it other component failures? And Jimmy and I talk a lot of times about a lot of these things is it's not just always the proverbial, I got a gate stuck on the ground. You know, what is happening? Yeah. So what what kind of, another question here, what kind of electrical related problems do you encounter with lift gates? And those are, you know, there's all kinds of different things that are part of, you know, lift gate road calls, breakdowns, headaches in general, you know, whether it's battery failures, road calls, where you actually have to go out and do something with the gate. Um, is it just seemingly, you know, short pump life, uh, switch solenoid issues, all those things. So let's see what kind of response we did get there. So it looks like the majority of them are fall under battery failures. Um, actually, neck and neck on battery failures and road calls. Um, you know, lift gate components, um, about 50%, so it's way up there as well. And again, all these can go back to uh, battery issues. That's, you know, a lot of times we sit there and talk about um, a trailer. That if you look at what a trailer costs, you know, anywhere from a, a 28 foot pup to a fully insulated reefer, that you may spend fifty to $100,000 for the trailer itself. You may spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 for a reefer, you know, ten, fifteen thousand $15,000 for a gate, all these other things you add up. All it takes is a dead battery to cause you to have, you know, not only a road call, but, you know, dissatisfied customers, missed loads. Um, the hours of service laws have changed so many things that, um, that, that one dead battery, that, you know, hey, it's, a, it's a hundred dollar battery or whatever, but that can snowball into a, you know, a thousand dollar road call and say, well, it doesn't cost, you know, a thousand dollars. Well, yeah, it does. And if you look at, um, the price for somebody to go out, they're going to put batteries in it. Um, and you may have just, you know, interrupted the guy's delivery schedule. They got to send another truck and trailer, so we can very easily become that that thousand dollar bill very quickly. Just to just to add to that, Larry, not uh, the customer, the uh, uh, the freight that has to be delivered to that customer. You know, that's one other thing to take into consideration um, is unhappy customers, drivers, um, when they have to deal with the uh, gate stuck on the ground. I'm sure that's not a 
something they really want to deal with. So all those things you know, take into consideration. Very true. Um, we talk about it and get into all these different you know systems. Is you know why does really somebody need a system? And again, we we talk about you know what is wrong with that traditional dual pole system. Well, a lot of it and where the whole need for systems came about was if you look at a traditional truck and trailer, you have an all-ladder on a truck. It's got to go through wiring to the batteries. Then from the batteries, you know, typically we used a, a dual pole type stinger cable. It had to go through that recoil, went to another socket, went to the length of the trailer. So by the time that voltage got back to the loop gate batteries, it was nowhere near what it needed to be to be able to properly charge those batteries. So when we talk about system, you know, and what we offer, you know, there's other competitive products out there too, but when we talk about systems, one of the biggest things you got to be able to combat is that voltage drop issue. Again, that's a lot of cabling, a lot of connections. And if you look at uh, the systems we offer, we kind of broke it into two parts. Uh, part one is we call it the, the brawn of the system, that you have a DC to DC converter inside the battery box. And what its job to do is whatever voltage we get back there, say it's 10 volts, 11 volts, whatever, we can step that voltage back up to 14 volts so we can get the right voltage to get those batteries charged faster. Because, again, if I have the right voltage, I can push energy in faster, and I can make sure I get those batteries at 100%. And again, this is a shared for, for every different system. But, you know, that's the brawn. But something's got to control this and, and make it smart. And, and also to add to that, very, very good. Um, remember that it, you know, this is a, a temperature compensated as well. So, you know, in those colder climates, um, we're going to use voltage. We're going to step that voltage up even higher um, to push more energy into those those batteries to properly charge them when when you're in those colder climates. That's one thing I will say. Batteries are like me in cold weather. They don't like to work. So uh, when you do get very cold batteries, they won't take a charge. It's, it's uh, Bruce always told us years ago that batteries are like a tube of toothpaste. It's hard to get anything out of them. It's damn near impossible to put back. So you've got to have that right push to get that energy back into it. That's right. First, we're going to talk about today is uh, going back to all those different criteria on selecting a charging system. Is what sources do you have available? You know, some fleets that say, "Hey, I just want to charge off uh, Stinger." You know, I got single poles, I got dual poles, whatever. That's when we talk about a single source system, it says it's going to pull power from one connection on that truck, and it may be again single pole, maybe dual pole. But uh, it is a single source, and in most applications, that's all they need. Um, and the, the single pole or dual pole, and I can you know feel people cringing out there in the audience right now that are listening. Is you know single pole? You always cuss the single pole. Well, yes, I do because single pole is very limited. But we do have customers that you know have a a lease account that does still have single pole, and they want that flexibility. So we do still offer a single pole connection. But we'll be the first one to say that you are much better off to use dual pole because there just really is not a, a ground between truck and trailer. Either. So now, now talking about um, you got the Direct 03 here. Um, basically, it's you have all the same great features, um, but it's utilizing a separate seven way box. So we pull power from the seven way uh, to send the signal back to that DC DC converter. To turn on and start charging. You know, different looking box, um, but all the same great logic um, built into this box, just utilizing a separate segment. And same thing with our, uh, our straight truck version. Um, same same box, same, same great features, um, but obviously there's no seven way on the front of a uh, box truck. Um, so your, your only source would be the, the truck batteries. So we provide a harness uh, that directly connects into the truck batteries, and that's where we pull our power from to turn our DC DC converter on. And the, the key to all these, no matter what, is we do have dedicated batteries for liftgate, and we always kind of you know, refer to this as liftgate. We've got a lot of customers that have auxiliary batteries for anything. So this is really, you know, we call it liftgate charging system. It's really auxiliary battery charging. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. Uh, but this may be a race car where it's got dedicated batteries for a winch. It may be a, uh, a food type trailer. It may you know, be trying to power 
um, you know, an inverter, whatever. But if we have remote batteries we're trying to keep charged. And the key to all this is we got to keep them separate. That's, uh, again, with any of these products, whether it's a seven-way or, or dual-pole stinger, uh, straight truck, is we've got to keep them separate and protect that extra set of batteries. We want to get them charged, but we can't let uh, someone leave headlights on to kill liftgate batteries, nor do we want someone to run the liftgate to the point that we have a, a no-start on the tractor. You can't drive a full, uh, pallet jack home or liftgate home, but you got to keep them separate and protect the truck. It's real typical, you know, a technician, they want to pick up power, they're going to, they're going to pick up power where they can find it. Uh, this is a really good way to to police that system, police that circuit, uh, to make sure we keep a balanced system, a balanced system between the truck and the trailer. Um, you, you can't charge one thing and jeopardize another. Um, that power doesn't come from anywhere. It comes from a source, and we cannot jeopardize it. So this is a really good way to police that system. Now the, the the before products are things that you know people have seen for a long time, and uh, what we've tried to do now, we talk about a lot of these these systems now is uh, we see more and more customers that again you've got the hundred thousand dollar trailer and the twenty thousand dollar reefer and a fifteen thousand dollar gate, we can't let those things go down because of a you know a two hundred dollar battery. So one of the things that we've tried to combine on all these is to give fleets multiple charge packs. That's uh, I was at a, a beverage distributor one time, and they're supposed to run dual poles for their gate. And truck came in from you know all day out on the road, and noticed the dual pole was plugged in. I asked the driver, "Why did you not plug it in? Gate was working fine." It's like, yes, but you know you're you're cycling batteries, you're doing things like I don't care the gate work. Why do I need to have to reach over and plug another one in? Or what if there was something wrong with the dual pole? That you know drivers are instructed, "Hey, I'm going to plug in the dual pole." What if it doesn't work? What if the fuse is blown? What if the breaker strips? So, for many different reasons, we looked at that and says, you know, we need multiple charge sources. Uh, so, it may be, uh, you know, a seven-way only, or it may be a dual-pole in seven-way. says, hey, if we do have dual-pole, we're going to charge from that. That is our better source. It's direct to the batteries. You know, we can have extend mode. Even though if the truck's not running, we can continue to charge. Uh, so, it just gives a lot of flexibility, but says, hey, if that dual-pole is not there, I'm going to swap over automatically to the, the aux bin. And be able to, to charge those batteries. Uh, maybe a combination of having you know severe cables in parallel. Uh, again, it all depends. You know, we go back to that first slide. There's a lot of questions that you know you got to answer. Is what is the right one? There's not a uh, one size fits all. And people have noticed for years now that we've had a lot of different systems over the years. We've consolidated it down, but made it in a more modular way. That hey, I can do whatever you want to do. What's the right thing to your system? That's right, Larry. You got to. You really got to take a look, you know, going back to the beginning of the presentation, you really got to look at cycle, how often you're cycling those gates, how much energy you're taking out. Um, got to put that much back in, that energy back into those batteries. Um, colder climates, that's where the severe service really shines. So you get that kind of that two stage charging, that bulk charging um, directly from the tractor straight back to those lithium batteries. Um, and on top of that, our DC DC converter. Um, but stepping that voltage up right at the, the lift gate batteries. So it, it's all about your operation, climate, cycling, how often you cycle that gate. All those things have to be taken into consideration. And the, the on top of that, when we did all that, says, hey, this is a good time to look at the front of a trailer. That you know, I look at a lot of beverage trucks or trailers anymore, and they've got you know a seven-way box, a dual-fold box, an interior light controller. Uh, you know, our uh, charging system control, well, that's just a lot of things on the front of the trailer. And you look at a, a reefer trailer, that takes up a lot of that front real estate. So how can we help the industry? And part of that was, let's consolidate it in one box. So you went from four or five boxes now to one box that has all that in it. Right. Um, and it gives you the ability to have that seven way and everything in it. There's also times, too, and we'll go to the next slide here, is uh, if you... Uh, want to you know keep your factory seven way but you still want to have all that extra flexibility so that's where we came out with uh the select system as you all know it's now in the, the new box but still the same great product that allows us to have one extra box and still give you the single pole the dual pole you know seven way and uh, another pretty new feature we'll go on in the next slide is to give you some more intelligence for all those products 
So here's our interior light feature. It's not just a simple timer, um, but what it is is a built into this this nose box. Um, we look at we actually look at time, um, you know, 15, 30, 90, 90 minute timer. We also the most important thing is we look at battery voltage. Um, we're pulling power for those interior lights off the liftgate batteries. If we see that voltage drop to a what we consider a discharge state, we, we warn the driver or the operator that's in the trailer and we flash the lights a few times at them and say, hey, you're at a discharge state right now. We're going to shut these lights off so we don't jeopardize those batteries. Again, it's another way we, we can police that system and achieve our, our goal of keeping a balanced system and not jeopardizing those liftgate batteries. Yeah, and that's one thing, that, again, going back to, to picking out that entire system, is interior lights are very common anymore. Um, if you look at you know, a lot of the LTLs, more and more of them are getting away from the translucent roofs, going to aluminum roofs. Um, that, hey, if you ever been to one of those trailers in summertime, those things are ovens. So more fleets have gone to aluminum roofs. Obviously, you don't get light through aluminum, so more and more fleets are using interior lights. But that goes back to the principal question when you, you're trying to select the system, is where does this power come from? If you're going to run interior lights, uh, telematics, uh, you know, inverters for, for power jacks, all these different add-ons you can have, is, that's all got to be considered in your, your calculations. It's not just, okay, we're going to use the gate five times a day, we're going to pull out X amount of amps, we got to put the X amount back. Well, what about all those other devices? Right. And, you know, and the same thing happens on trucks. It's not any one item that's usually the, the killer. It's the proverbial the straw that broke the camel's back is, well, I've got this, and I've got this, and oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, I've got this, and suddenly it's like, now I'm trying to put in much energy as 50 lifts. doesn't matter where that energy went, it's still X amount of energy went out, so we got to figure out how to put that much plus more back in. There's always an inefficiency, so you're really trying to strive for, you know, more than just what you took out to make sure you are in the, in the black on that, not in the red, and you're at a dis uh, dis uh, deficiency that says, yeah, okay, it didn't die the first day, but after three days, I've got a road call. So I put new batteries in it, and guess what happens three days from now? Again, I'm still in a deficiency, and I'm going to have the same thing happen again. So when we look at all these, again, uh, Jimmy's you know, been on some of these, you know, we had a customer that ran a, a syrup pump. Uh, when we did all the calculations, they didn't tell us anything about that. Uh, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, we have this device that pulls 60 amps. That's, right. that's, that's, that's a lot of current. <laughs> yeah. uh, especially if the driver doesn't ever turn it off. Uh, so they could be going down the road pulling 60 amps the whole time. They get to the next stop. For some reason, the gate don't work. Nothing wrong with the gate. You just pulled out more energy you put in. So, so this really takes the uh, really kind of takes the guesswork out of things. Yes. Gives them a, a location, one centralized location to, uh, to connect. So they don't have to guess. And they know it's being policed. They know... It's protecting the system as a whole. And we're usually put, you know, low voltage, you know, devices on tractors, you know, whether it's inverters or, you know, you know every truck OEM has a, you know, a cab LVD that if the engines aren't running, the uh, voltage drops at a certain point, it shuts off dome lights, cigarette lighters, all those things. We have to do the same thing on trailers now, that there's all these extra devices that we have to control. Um, that's, again, it is a, Certain amount of energy that's on that trailer, we got to figure out a way to control it, protect it, make sure that that gate is able to do its job. So, again, still talking about lift gate charging or charging a battery in general. It's all about opportunity charging. Um, we have our, our solar um, solar option here, uh, 100 watt up to a 400 watt system. Um, but again, it's it's energy. It's free energy. Why not charge those liftgate batteries when the trailer's sitting? So if you want to add to that, Larry. Yeah. Um, and, again, solar's really taken off in the last couple of years. That, you know, there is a, a push to be green. Um, it is a very, uh, you know, free energy source. Now, obviously, you still have to pay for them when you initially purchase it. But once you do, that is free energy. And it can actually equate to fuel savings. Um, one thing that, you know, we try to do is uh, make sure that that solar panel puts out everything it can so that if you are going down the road, if we're getting 10 amps, 5 amps, mm -hmm. whatever out of those panels, that is that much less that the alternator on the tractor has to produce. Engine drag. Yeah, so 
what does that equate to? I have no idea. But is it going to save you fuel? Yes. Is it going to help make sure batteries are better maintained? Yes. Uh, and one of the, some of the real uh, benefit we've seen is uh, a lot of fleets have a, you know, a three or four to one ratio where you know a lot of trailers are going to be parked. So that whenever they do need it, it has been sitting in the sun, and they're going to make sure when that trailer does go in service, go out and make its, its run, those batteries are in a good state of charge and ready to do the job. It kind of goes back to the analogy of the full, full tank of gas um, and just keeping those keeping those liftgate batteries or any battery at that, at that you know, as close to 100% state of charge as possible is really going to extend your battery life. Um, batteries really don't have a conscience. You know, they cycle them at 50% state of charge all the time. It's pretty detrimental to those batteries. And so this is another really good option. Solar is a really good option to uh, to keep those batteries. At yeah, and it's, it's like I say, it's a, it's a great complement. The one thing you know hard about solar is there's a lot of variables, um, but that is the the thing of going through and make sure you understand uh, a fleet's needs of you know where they're going to operate, uh, how many lifts they do, what kind of weight they do, you know, are they predominantly cold weather, you know, all those things you know go into a account of what a customer needs, and we try to put all that information together to select, make sure it's the right one. But it doesn't matter, you know, whose system you use or what system you're using, you know, as a whole is, uh, the whole thing is you got to keep those batteries charged. And a couple things you got to make sure you do is you have to provide some sort of an indication of what those batteries are. That, you know, some of the biggest issues we see, uh, you'll get some uh, call complaints as well, the, the lift gate died on my third stop. It's like, um, there, there's some misinformation there. Uh, that it's not that it ran out of energy on the third stop. It actually had a problem three or four days ago just and just run. finally ran out of battery. Uh, the two batteries at 100% state of charge in a trailer will operate a gate quite a few times. Mm -hmm. So what happens a lot of times is, you know, guy goes out and hits the button, it goes up, goes down, whatever, all right, everything's good. It's, like, it's amazing how low a battery voltage a gate will actually operate at. That doesn't mean everything's good. So you got to have some sort of indication to uh, let driver know does you know is the, the state of charge good on those batteries and is your charge source good uh, again we talk about you know plugging in a dual pole if the the breaker stripped or the fuse is blown you can plug it in all day still ain't gonna get any charge so you have to have some sort of indication so that driver knows hey i plugged it in something has happened that's right we are getting charged uh and you know, some of the other things we talked about earlier before we started today was, you know, regardless of any of this that we've talked about so far, you got to do preventive maintenance. Absolutely. The, the worst thing they could have done was put maintenance free on those batteries. You gotta, you gotta open that battery box you know, during your PMs um, and really, you know, check connections, um, look for, you know, battery wear, battery bulging, um, inspect all the terminals, all those types of things. You gotta, you still gotta do. That is the heart of the electrical system, so you've got to take care of it. There's no such thing as maintenance free. Yeah, and not just, you know, you got to look at them. You know, those batteries should be load tested twice a year, just like you do on a tractor. Absolutely. Um, and when you, you look at the, all the battery manufacturers spend a lot of time trying to seal their battery box and everything, all it takes is someone to do something dumb, run over a lid or whatever, and it never quite seals right again. But if you look at the where a lot of these trailers operate now, you know, every state kind of does things differently. Some use rock salt, some use the magnesium chloride or sodium chloride, uh, beet juice, you name it. You know, people are trying different things for, for de-icing. So if you got a trailer that operates in three or four states, look at the chemical cocktail you're wind up in, and that is some corrosive, you know, nasty yeah. stuff. Very toxic. Uh, and again, we, we go back to the, the, the people that are used to having that six months, you know, battery life. If they do fix their charging system, well, suddenly... Batteries last two, three, four, you know, five years, whatever. Guess what? Ain't nobody been in that battery box since because it ain't been broke. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's it's not the case with um, with batteries. You still got to maintain. Yeah, and we'll see a lot of times somebody will start complaining. So well, it, it seems to to die. Everything's working right, but it doesn't seem to work anywhere near like it should. You go through and test the batteries. The batteries are just completely worn out. That they're a hundred percent, but they have no capacity. You know, same thing, you, you, your, your cell phone, you notice that it only lasts about an hour. 
Is there anything wrong with your phone? No, that battery's just been cycled to death, and there's no capacity left. You've got all the all the life out of it you can. It's time to replace. And so, yeah, just kind of summarize all that it is, again, whether it's our charging system or somebody else's, you know, whatever, and we obviously we hope it's ours, but you, you still got to do your basics to maintain it, make sure it's right, and also whenever you, uh, you know, look at how you're going to spec a, a trailer or a straight truck, that you take all those things in, into account and make sure you're putting the right system on that trailer. And to, uh, to go on, still talking about maintenance, um, don't forget about your input source, your tractor. Um, that's where we get all this power from. So if it's the integrity of that circuit is bad, what do you think that's going to do to your integrity of your liftgate charging system? So you, you can't forget that portion. Um, you still got to maintain the tractor, make sure it can output the proper voltage, output the proper voltage under a load, um, because again, we keep a balanced system, um, so we have those thresholds built into our controller to protect both systems. So don't forget about the tractor as well. Alrighty. Uh, now is a good time, as Celia mentioned before, that you can uh, type in any questions, comments that you'd like to discuss. Um, feel free if you, if you want us to uh, we'll try to take it on air. Uh, if not, feel free to still submit it. We'll be more than happy to reach out to you afterwards. Um, and some of that is uh, we do enjoy hosting these webinars. Uh, we try not to make it you know too salesy. We're here to help the industry. So if you have any ideas, things you'd like us to go into in more detail or have another one, you know, please submit them now. Um, if you'd like us to, to reach out to you afterwards, you know, give us your information, we'd be more than happy to. Um, while we get a chance to have people put in some questions, um, we do have a, a couple we would like to ask you. Uh, all right, so first question is, do you have any additional questions that were not answered today? So if you, you want to list any of your questions um, that you like answers for, uh, please do so. And we'll give you a couple minutes to, to type anything in you have. I notice we do have one question that came in, um, but we'll get to the, the next slide before we pull that up and, and answer it. But feel free to, to type anything in. And also, uh, would you like to be contacted about any additional information from, you know, about, you know, liftgate charging or anything else that we can help you with? Um, you know, our, our taglines, we make parts that charge and protect batteries. And other cool stuff on big trucks. That's, you know, that is what we do. Um, yeah, we know it very well. We're the pioneers in these systems. Um, and we do know how all these things need to work together. So please, if there's uh, anything that we can help you with or you have questions, um, you know, uh, let us know. We'll be more happy to reach back out to you. Absolutely. We're, we are solutions providers. So if you have a problem, list it and we'll, um, we'll do everything we can to help you. Yeah, let's see, we do have one question that came in. Ooh, actually, we got several questions. So click on the first one. Yes. Um, that was just a, a complimentary comment somebody made. Um, why can we not use a 24 volt system instead of a 12 volt system? And honestly, there's no reason why we can't. Um, the industry is going to go higher voltages. You know, obviously, most of Europe uses 24 volts. Um, and, you know, there is a big push to go to the, the 42 volt system across the board in the U.S. Um, we're not there yet. Um, but uh, obviously, from an electrical standpoint, we would love to see it. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, efficiencies by going to higher voltage. Basically, you double the voltage, you, you cut the current in half. Right. So, you know. From our point of view, yeah, we'd love to see that. Um, it would help everybody. The, the one thing to add to that is um, I think maybe a concern would be they could go to smaller wire, but that that plays into um, the kind of dances around you know, other issues that may pop up with going with smaller wire. So. Yeah, that, that is a, a very good point that I always cringe at, that um, a lot of people are wanting to go to higher voltage because they can save money on uh, wire size. But one thing you got to keep in mind is the voltage goes up, things corrode much faster. So, so okay, we're going to go 24 volts, we can cut current in half so I can go to a lot smaller wire. 
well, yes, you can, but now your corrosion is going to happen so much faster. Is that going to cause you a whole new set of problems? Uh, if you, you know, we spend a lot of time at TMC and a lot of the corrosion committees and just some of the crazy things we're seeing. Um, and we had a, a task force uh, session at, at TMC talking about corrosion and wires. And it's scary. Um, if you look at the problems we have right now on 12 volts, mm -hmm. uh, when you start having corrosion happen that much faster, it gets, it gets real concerning to us. Yeah, one more. So do you know, next question would be, do you offer an all-in-one system that charges the lift gate and pallet jack at the same time? That's also solar. And we'll reach out to you directly on this. That's do we have one part number that does that? No, because again, there's so many variables for what fleets are trying to do. So when we made the new system, we made it to be a very modular system so that you can, you know, it's kind of like adult Lego. So we can build on this and to do whatever somebody wants. It's like a plug and play. Yes. System. Um, so you, know, you, you start off with part A and you add part B and you snap on part C and it's like, okay, we did everything you asked for. Um, but that way it's very, uh, modular and very easy to adapt to what a customer needs. So um, if you don't mind, I will reach out straight uh, directly with you after this and send you some information, sir. Any other questions? Let me give, it a, give it a few few seconds to answer any or ask any questions you'd like. And again, feel free that you know if you if you do want to be contacted or something on the side, you can still use the question and answer. We moved past that one slide, but uh, you know feel free to type in anything you'd like, and we'll be happy to either myself or Jim will reach out to you and and do whatever we can to, to help and support you. Um, some of the things I see some names on here of people I'm not familiar with is one of our dilemmas is we sell a lot of our products to our our uh, channel partners, the the Liftgate OEMs and the trailer OEMs. We don't always know where our stuff goes. So if you have our product and you need help and training, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We want to support you. Um, we'd like for you to still be our customer 10 years from now, 20 years from now. So, um, But if we don't know you're using it, we can't support you. So, so please don't hesitate to reach out.